Hey guys, this is John with CheatCheatBros.com. Today I'm going to run over the new grade tab labels. It's January 14th, 2021, and yesterday I sat down and redid all the labels. Um, a lot of them are the same. There are some new different ones. I consolidated some. The reason I did this is some of the data sets we pulled in 2019, 2020 changed into 2021, so the numbers were skewed a little bit compared to the ranges that we were putting people in. So, I'm just gonna do a quick video and run these over. And again, I have to give you my spiel. So if you're not one of our premium members and you'd like to try out any of our cheat sheets, we post them for free every Thursday in our Facebook group. I'll put the link in the description. Feel free to join and you can try them on Thursdays and other random days, I'll pop them in there. If you do wanna become a premium member, we have a Facebook chat. It's only 13 bucks a month, so it's one of the cheapest memberships you'll see. Um, but we have a good time. So let's go ahead and get started. So up top, you can see these are the classifications that I've narrowed them down to. We have our tier one, tier two, tier three, tier four, tier five, our sleepers, and then we have some labels for some of these other guys like big minute bump, industry pick, low minute player, low production stats, ice cold. And then I just made a no category for players that fall into that. I kind of track them and see why they did not make a category above it. It's kind of the catch-all at the bottom of the rung. So let's go ahead and start up here. I'm going to run through these real quick. So a tier one core player, this is a player with solid steady minutes. So there's no big change in his projected minutes versus what he's been averaging in the last five games. These players also have a higher fantasy point per minute production, a higher usage rate, and they've got a, dec a decent ceiling and a decent X value over the last five games. So these are mid to upper priced guys that we can build around when we just call them tier one core plays. Um, they're people to definitely look at every day, see if they've got the ceiling and if they fit in your lineups. Uh, the tier two solid player, this, these are players that don't quite make the tier one. Maybe their ceiling or their fantasy point per minute is not quite as high or maybe their minutes aren't as high as that 30 threshold. So for the tier two, we drop the minutes down to playing at least projected for at least 25 minutes and averaging within three to five minutes of that over the last five games. So steady minutes. Um, players that are projected at least 4.9x. Um, I don't like projections, but if they're projected at 4.9 or higher, it's someone we should at least look at to put them on the radar. Also to make this category, their fantasy point per minute production over the last five has to be above 0.9. So the threshold I set is 0.8999. And typically what I've seen is players below 0.8 flop about 60% of the time. Um, sometimes they'll do well depending on the circumstance, but a players over 0.9 are more likely to produce and return value as opposed to someone below that number. So that's kind of a number I've been monitoring and what I set this at. Also, usage rate's big. Uh, we brought usage rate back. We brought it over to the grade tab, and so I put a parameter on there for a usage rate of 20 plus. Also, if you don't look at the fantasy point per minute production, usage rate is a good one. If they're below 20, they're risky. If they're below 15, they're really risky. If they're above 20, then they're slightly above average. That's solid. So a tier two player is going to meet a lot of these parameters to put in there in our pool. Our tier three players, now these are players projected with at least 25 minutes. And in this category, it can be a jump, or actually it has to be a jump from their average minute. So someone that's popping up, you know, 8, 10, 12, 15, 16 more minutes, but their fantasy point per minute. But uh, fantasy point per minute production still has to be over 0.9 and usage over 20. So this is someone with really good peripheral stats, but minutes are the only question. And if you've watched any of my videos, projected minutes versus average minutes last five, whenever there's a jump of more than 10, it's about 50-50 if that player actually gets those minutes. So if you're doing any type of a custom projection, or even if you're copy and pasting the stats out of our sheet, I can do a video and show you how to do those, but I would take their projected minutes, their last five minutes average, divide them out, and then take that as a middle ground for a projection, and that's going to give you more of a baseline of what to look for. But anyways, these are tier three players, and you can see we just put on there, we like it if he gets the minutes. 
So if you look at something like Miami the other night where they only had eight guys in the rotation and they were projected for 35 minutes, yeah, they're going to get the 35 or more minutes because there's only eight guys in the rotation. If it's someone playing 20 minutes and they're projected at 35, you kind of need to look at it or understand game theory to figure out, are they really going to get those minutes? Is it something they may or may not get those minutes? But anyway, tier three players are players we like if they get the minutes because they have good peripheral stats. So going down to the next one, tier four, these are lineup fillers. So these are steady minute players of at least 25 minutes per game. Um, their last five value is 5x, so they're averaging 5x or higher on all of their recent games. So they're basically just kind of steady, strong fantasy point per minute players. Um, usually the fantasy point per minute production is 1.1 and up. So these are good guys you can eat up your lineups with, kind of stick in the middle. They don't blow us away, but they're not, you know, dirt bags either. And then I broke one off and we did a tier five, a low level filler. So these are guys that are projected at least 24 minutes. They may or may not be fluctuating in project projection minutes, but the fantasy point per minute production here is below 0.79 and usage below 20. The usage parameter for this one is 15 to 19.99, so between 15 and 20. And then like we said, these guys are someone who may be doing really well, but their peripheral stats aren't quite as great as some of our tier two, tier three, tier four players, but they're guys that we could plug in our lineups that'll give us some upside, but they are a little bit more risky. So we just call them tier five, low level lineup fillers. Um, typically when you look at it, about half of them you might like, half of them you might not like, but I wanted to kick them into a separate category. And then I did one here called sleeper. So a sleeper is basically, it's compared to their current projection. So if you take their current projected minutes times their fantasy points per minute over the last five, and that number is significantly higher than their current projection, and they have a usage of at least 18 with a team total of 107 or more, I put this into a sleeper category. The reason is, Projections are created based on minutes, and then they just take the fantasy point per minute for the season or for the players however long, and they calculate it out. But here at Cheat Sheet Pros, we look a lot at the last five fantasy point per minute production because we can see a lot of plus and minuses. Players who are hot, playing at a higher level, maybe they're having a breakthrough, or players that are cold, playing at a lower level. So if they've got a higher fantasy point per minute production and they do get those minutes, these are people we think that can exceed the expectations on the current projection. So those fall into a sleeper category. And then these down here, these four are kind of, I don't want to say crap players, but they're players that don't make any of our tier fives above or fall into the sleeper category. And so these are going to be the big minute bump, so this is any player that's got a boost of 10 or more minutes over their average. So if someone's averaging 15 minutes and suddenly they're projected 30, he's gonna fall into this category. We don't look at any other stats. He's just a risky minute player, so that's someone that you can take a look at. I'm gonna come back to this one. Low minute player, this is just a guy who averages a low amount of minutes. He's projected for a low amount of minutes. So not really someone we want to put a lot of stock in for fantasy. Low production stats. Um, so they're going to fall into this category no matter what minutes they have if they don't meet any of the above categories, but they have a very low fantasy point per minute production and a very low usage. Typically, these are going to be guys that are below 0.79 on fantasy point per minute with a usage below, definitely below 20. Lots of times below 15 is where we see these guys fall into. And then the no category, that's the catch-all. And the other one uh, that's almost the catch-all is the ice cold. So if they don't fall into any of the above categories, these are just kind of players with you know steady minutes, but they're averaging around 4x, 4.5x value, and they're currently projected less than 5x value. So these are guys that are they're not doing well, they're cold, they're not producing based on their salary, and they're projected less than their salary. Um, so those are the tiers that we're going to kind of look at for the grade tab. And again, if you come over here to the grade tab, let me open this up. You can see if you come out here, when you open it up, we got this sorted high to low and you can see the tabs here. Now, when you sort by these projections, we're going to sort by the 
highest projected value player. And you can kind of look here and get an idea of who we like, who we don't like. And just by looking at this tab, you can get an idea of what we think of that player. Now, the one I didn't go over was industry pick. So industry pick, this is someone that's projected in the industry to do really well or exceed value but their peripheral stats didn't fall into any of our other categories. So those players might have a low amount of minutes, a low usage. Um, it could be anything. It's just something the industry is picking. So that's someone that we're saying, hey, look at this guy. See if you like him. Do you really think he's going to get those minutes? Now with the big blockbuster trade yesterday with Harden, you can see there's a lot of industry picks here. And most of them are these Houston players. So Nawaba, I, do, I don't even know if that's pronounced right, so don't don't bash me. Um, he was averaging 23 minutes. Now he's up to 37. So it's a huge minute change. He's projected at almost 9x value. Well, we know why. Well, Harden left, so they need, they're need they shorthanded. They need players to fill minutes. So we understand that one. So I'm not really worried about these peripheral stats. And then these two guys here, again, we got these two Miami players. And these are tier three players, so we like them if they get the minutes. So these are guys, he was averaging 19 minutes, but he's projected for 34. So they're a big bump in minutes. So he's bumped 15 and he's bumped seven minutes. But we like their peripheral stats. That's why they fall into tier three. Now, if they were playing steady minutes, they would be a tier one or tier two play. Now, when we look at these peripheral stats, let me slide across here so you can see. His average value is only 4.6x, but that's playing 19 minutes a game. So you could assume if he's going to add 15 more minutes, which is almost doubling, it's about a 40% increase, that he's going to exceed 4.6x value. Um, his fantasy point per minute, I mean, it's solid, 1.12 and 1.07 over the last five. So that's well over my 0.9 threshold of players that I look for. Um, so that's a guy that you know we do like tonight. And same thing, you can go down here to Gabe Vincent and look at that. And, oh, usage was the other one I wanted to look at. So he has a usage over 20. That's really good. Gabe Vincent's the same way. He's got a usage of 24.9. And these other guys, 15, 12, 18, they're a little bit more risky because that usage threshold, threshold of about 20. But you can see, okay, we like these guys. The other guys you can make your decision on the industry pick. Um, Cousins and Silva are popping up as a... Uh, play but look I mean they're projected at 17 minutes um, they're averaging 13 and 9 minutes uh, Cousins has a really high usage Silva does not uh, fantasy points per minute Cousins is really high he's just not playing that many minutes but he could get more with this trade but you can kind of get an idea of how we use this grade tab to break down and then we got some solid plays here and these three and then you kind of go down but I kind of like these new tabs um, I narrowed down the number of categories, and then you can even come in here and say, here, let me show you how to do it. So this little drop down here, in case you're new to Excel, click that, and then you see this select all right here. Uncheck that box, and it removes all of these. And then you can say, I want to see just tier one and tier two core plays, and let's put tier three in there. Put them in there, and then if you click it again, you can sort high to low, low to high, either way just puts them in order. And you can say, okay, so these are all the core plays, the tier two plays, the tier three plays. So we looked at the tier three minute plays. So we're saying, hey, if they get these minutes, we like their peripheral stats. The tier two plays, they don't quite get this. You can see there's a couple guys that are averaging below 25, below 30. So there's some lower minute players. Um, decent, some are a little cold, but we know what's going on, but they all have a good fantasy point per minute production over the last five. They're all over 0 0.9, a lot, of, a lot of them over one. And then usage, you see here, they're all over 20. So we like guys with usage over 20. So these are guys we can look at. And then your tier one players up here, which some days will have more than others. Some days it's a few, some days it's a handful. These are guys that are playing steady minutes. You can see they're all projected at 30 plus. And they're all averaging usually 30 plus except for Lamelo, And his change is only three minutes, so that's not that big of a deal. Um, Brogdon's projected at five less minutes, but this number is usually plus or minus within five. If it gets above that, they're going to drop down to maybe a tier two, tier three guy. 
And then these guys are gonna be solid last five value, which you can see all the green. They're averaging 5X plus or really close to it. I think I got it set at 4.8 or 4.9. 499, 498, we don't wanna exclude them. That's close enough for us. Um, they've got a decent ceiling and their fantasy point per minute production is really high. You can see there's only one guy here that's at 0.92 and that's uh, Rozier and he's right at the threshold. Everybody else is 1.2, 1.2, 1.3, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 8, 1, 4, 1, 7. You can see they've got a good number. Usage, all, all the usage of these guys is over 20. You can see a lot of them are mid 20s, some are pushing 30. So these are kind of rocks for the lineup. They might not have the most upside, but they've got their good core guys we can put in there for cash or GPP. Um, anyways, I'm going to link this video on the PM update of the cheat sheet and go ahead and share it just so you guys can kind of see what we are looking at. And um, if you have any questions, let me know, man. Have a good day, guys, and good luck, everybody.